Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 29. Jason, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about XML. So Jason, the JavaScript object notation, is available in the Python standard module called JSON. And uh, you can also have like faster variations of that available in uh, third-party libraries. And for Rust, we use the JSON implementation for SERDI, which is the serialize and deserialize library mostly used for objects in Rust. I will show you how to, um, well, serialize and deserialize a static uh, defined object that you have in your code. Then uh, you can also use uh, dynamic JSON coming in and you can write uh, kind of inline uh, JSON in uh, your code as well, which is uh, fairly convenient. For Python, there are some generic uh, serializers and deserializers for objects. Most of them, however, have some uh, safety issues because they are then able to execute um, some uh, code. So you should make sure that you know about the source. A fairly good implementation that I found in the, the Material Virtual Lab source code is uh, called the monty.json. This one kind of makes sure it's a fairly safe way to do those both directions. Let's quickly hop into uh, the code. As you can see, on the left, as usual, we have our Python code on the right, the Rust code. In Python, we need to import the JSON module. In Rust, we add the 30 JSON crate and we import the JSON macro for later use. On the left, the fairly easy example of uh, using a JSON string in the first line, loading it into an object, and then we print it. In Python, we use the fact that we can uh, just with Python code very easily write a list object that has an element that is a dict that has a value that is a tuple. And uh, we can serialize that using the JSON dump s function. Once we have that uh, JSON string, we print it as well. And to demonstrate that this serialized form can be deserialized again, we use the JSON load s to get the string back into the object form and we print that as well. The code that does uh, the same thing in Rust on the right side, we have the 30 JSON already imported and in order to deserialize any JSON string coming in. We have provided here a JSON string. We use the raw string notation and the delimiter is this pound with the quotation mark. So we end with quotation mark pound because we have to use quotation marks for valid JSON. So the JSON string is the same as on the left, of course. In order to deserialize, we could on this side, if we knew that this was a valid known, for example, class, um, the class that we have, but the generic one provided to us by Serdi JSON is called value. So we make the type definition or the type hint for our O to be Serdi JSON value. Then we call the Serdi JSONs from string. We pass the string. We expect this to work, so we unwrap it. And then we can print the object, which will then hold those decoded values. Again, we imported this uh, JSON macro. So we use that JSON macro here. This uh, JSON macro would then interpret for us the angular bracket as a list, the curly one as a dict, and the round one again as a list because there are no tuples in JSON. But this is fairly convenient. So you can actually write out your JSON code as if you were in a Python with uh, one exception. If you want to have a uh, none, so the null value in JSON, you cannot simply write it out because Rust is a statically typed language and none is not enough information for the compiler to know what to do with this. So you have to make a type hint to explain to the compiler what your none could hold otherwise. Here in this example, I use the option, so it can be none, for an i32. This is completely unknown in Python, so this can be anything. 
but that's the advantage of uh, dynamic language and this is the thing that we have to do in Rust. The other thing that makes this hard to use is this is not supported as of now by the release version of Rust. You will have to use Nightly and enable the type ascription feature, which is not stable as of now either. So if you want to write inline JSON code, I suggest you avoid using uh, nuns because this will make uh, your whole ecosystem have to change to the unstable releases. Anyways, this is copying one by one the code that is on the Python side. And once we have created our JSON object, this will be also of this type uh, value. We can uh, print it. And here we then use the method of the objects to string to make a JSON out of it. And then we print the JSON. Let's run this uh, stuff. On the left, the first line was decoding a string of JSON into an object. So we can see the slight difference by using single ticks is the output of a dict or strings in the Python notation. Below we have the JSON serialized form of it. And then again, the object form because we decoded it again. On the right, you can see that our value object became an array that holds a string, that holds an object, and that holds a string that is a null type and a number and so on. So this works for us easily. First line shows we can decode any JSON string coming in. The second one looks exactly the same because where we used the inline written JSON, it will be also readable, of course. And at the very end, we have the valid JSON string as we have on the left side. Let's hop over to the code that actually shows us how we can use a statically defined class to load and read from it. On the left in uh, Python, you can see we have to import uh, JSON again. On the right, we have to now also use the 30 crate itself because the 30 JSON is just uh, the JSON implementation on top of 30. And from 30, we pull in the deserialize and the serialize macros that we can then uh, use to derive in later down in the code. In uh, both codes, I have created in Python the class person, in Rust the struct person. They have uh, the same fields, so we have a name, an age, the person might have a job or not, is uh, verified in whatever manner, and has uh, parents. Now, in Python, we can write the init code right away, that then sets all the properties in uh, the init function, and here I've used the magic function str to make this uh, printable for us. The str implementation is more or less this uh, debug derive. So once we have done that, we get this uh, for free. Then we use uh, derive deserialize and serialize. These are the same things as if we implemented in Python those JSON encoders and the JSON decoders. This is one of the few times where the Rust code is shorter than Python because the amazing survey library provides us all this amazing magic. In uh, Python, <clears throat> if you wanna be able to encode our object, so in our case, uh, the person, the easiest way, but this will probably not work for every object, is to simply pass in the object, so the O, and then we return a dictionary with the values if you have more complicated values in your person, for example, a date time object, this is not by default JSON serializable. This means you will have to write your own custom implementation of how to serialize a date time, for example. But the default things that we use here, like strings, numbers, um, booleans, <coughs> and lists should work fine. And below, the same simple idea, 
we uh, think that we can uh, use a uh, dict for our object. We use this also to decode. So we create our class a decoder with the decode from the string coming in. We use the default JSON libraries JSON decoder decode function to get the dictionary out of it. And in order to create our instance of person, we call the init function person with the key value args that are basically held in the dict that we serialized in the first place. Below in the code, you can uh, see the example of how we do it. So here, to be explicit, I also used the, the keys of the arguments. So we have the person with the name and all the other things uh, set. Once we have, we dump this into a string. In order to do this, we cannot just use dump s and our bob because person by default is not serializable. But if we pass the encoder class that we've created, up here, we can then create a JSON string that is correctly dumping our person. And later with the decoder class, we can then use load s to load the person back from our JSON representation. The Monty JSON I referred to at the, the beginning of the presentation does all this uh, for you, and it would add the necessary info to load for you the person object. So it would import the library where your person is defined and then load correctly the person for you. All this uh, boilerplate code is of course much longer than just using dict and uh, loading with uh, quarks, but this is an example and not a fully fledged code for productive use. Hopping over to the Rust code, we do the same thing. We make an instance of our person. Here we have to use the name, age, and the other properties to give the compiler an idea of what he is supposed to build. And below we use the certification uh, to string. We pass Bob and uh, this works because we have implemented or derived from serialize. And this means that our person object can be rendered into a JSON string by certi JSON. Here we print the JSON representation and uh, below we let the person be recreated. In order for certi JSON to load a person back from the JSON string, we have to provide this uh, type hint. And this way, certi JSONs from string knows which deserialize implementation to use. So the compiler builds this out for us in a nice way. And here we can then print the person object using a debug formatter because we've derived from debug. Let's run the two codes to see if um, they do more or less what we promised. So Python first, Python person pi does its uh, job. You can see at the top, we get the output in a JSON format. And at the bottom, we have our implemented string representation for our object. If we now switch over to the Rust code, we can run the person binary. On the right, we can see the output as the JSON notation. And the big difference you can see immediately is uh, here we have spaces and uh, the default one of Sergi JSON does not have. And below is the default debug output of our person object. Therefore, serializing and deserializing is proven to work fine. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be HTTP clients.